is Ace with Rock Revolt Magazine. I am here with Trevor, Thousand Foot Crutch. What's going on, man? I'm well, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Not a problem. Thanks for, you know, listening to me fumble my words at the beginning that the rest of you won't get to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and man, you've got to be... You got to be enjoying this uh, much needed time off. This little break you guys have right now. It has been nice, brother. It's it's been nice to just get some uh, some healthy fam time, and uh, I got a couple little ones now, man. So it's been awesome to be home and get some summer hang time, man. Oh yeah, we, it's actually the first time we first time we've really ever taken a break in like twenty years, man. So it's been uh, it's been a good one. Yeah, yeah, man. You guys have been uh, definitely doing that whole road warrior thing, getting out and uh, seeing as many people live as you can, which is what you have to do in the industry right now. Absolutely, man. I, I mean, it, it's uh, it's a blast, man. We love connecting with people and just, you know, on an energy and music level and just uh, sharing uh, each other's stories, man, and kind of walking life together. So it, we love that, but it's uh, it's nice to to get a pause too, man, to get just kind of get home and get grounded and. Uh, Get some sleep. <laughs> breathe. Just breathe a little bit. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> just be able to breathe. Yeah. Well, man, uh, you know, many good things have come out of your guys' tour and, you know, gaining all the fans, everything like that. But you guys put together this uh, live album, Untraveled Roads, yes. man. How did, how did that come about? When did you guys know that, hey, we're going to do this? How did that come apart and when did it kind of, you know, when did you know? Yeah. You know what? We actually, we, we, uh, but, uh, uh, maybe two months ago, wrapped a, a 46 city U.S. tour, and it wasn't until we had, you know, played the first couple shows of that that we we were sitting around the bus thinking, man, it, it's been since 2010, I guess, since we've captured uh, any sort of the live experience of this band, you know, and uh, that was live at the Masquerade. We did a live DVD and album back then, but so we just kind of had that moment of like, man, it's we were having such a blast out there, and just thinking it's been a long time since we captured that, and. Uh, and we went independent since then and had three records since, you know, being with the label and all that stuff. So this was a, a really fun way to kind of be able to, you know, put that collection of the last three songs from the last three records uh, into the live mode and kind of share that with people all over the world that, you know, maybe haven't got to be a part of one of the shows or or maybe have, you know, but we really kind of wanted to to do this and uh also just to say thank you you know we we're doing we're also releasing uh videos like live video for each of the songs on the record for all 12 uh, oh, wow. like straight to our youtube channel yeah man we just wanted to give those away for free just to say thank you and uh hopefully uh yeah hopefully everyone enjoys that the album man it, it, it it's a it's one of those uh things you know with the live album like as a music fan <laughs> sometimes they're kind of hit or miss you know and um this I was, you know, at the end of the day, I think we were really proud to just the way that it came out. It, it captured the kind of personality of the band and that sort of energy that's sometimes hard to capture in the studio. Well, absolutely. And you guys definitely do have that live energy in front of the crowd. I mean, it's definitely something that, like you said, it's tough to capture that in the studio. But being in front of everybody, letting them see you, and then letting them actually hear you, not only does it capture the energy, it also lets people know that, man, these guys can do it just as good on a stage as they are putting it down in, you know, in the studio, that they are a live band. They're, where they're making the music that they actually make in the studio in person, which is huge for, you know, fans. Right on, man. Absolutely. We, well, and that's something too that's always been really important to us as a band, you know, is to be able to, um, reproduce what we put on a record live authentically, you know, um, without, you know, any bells or whistles. We just, we want to be able to kind of, you know, hear the fingers on the guitar and, you know, make sure everything is real. And, uh, so yeah, it's, it, thanks for, uh, for saying that, man. I, we definitely, uh, enjoy it. Is it, is it kind of like, you know, maybe you, you guys as musicians and artists, you kind of take it like maybe a sports team would where they watch their own tape to kind of see where their mistakes are. Can you use that live album to go <laughs> back and be like, well, man, this kind of sounded like this on this song, you know? It's like watching your own tape. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, it's so true. It's, uh, and we recorded all 46 shows. Like the, so there was a lot of, a lot of content, man. And so, uh, it was, yeah, it was, a lot of work but a lot of fun to kind of be able to compile the best moments that kind of felt like you know the best uh representation of the band yeah, yeah. now when you guys decided you were going to you know do this live album did that affect your set list in any way or was it just you guys rolled out with what you had um no you know it did it, it, it did uh it kind of 
uh, put us in a position where we, we had to you know change the set list every night to kind of you know we were trying to find that that right flow and that right dynamic and sometimes it, that takes time things you know and uh, where there's certain you know certain tunes where we felt like you know this part felt great and this this part you know let's try something different in, in the album and you know do this or that and so yeah it's it's uh, it changes all the time but. It, it was kind of fun in the same sense, though, to not, you know, a lot of tours, you kind of work out the set list in rehearsal, and then you might switch up a, a song or two, but for the most part, it's kind of set. So it was kind of fun, man, to have a whole tour where every night we're like, all right, what do we want to do tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, now as you guys listen, went back and listened through, well, you said, what, 46 shows, which is a lot of, lot of data. A lot of music to listen to. <laughs> Were you guys yeah, like your good. own toughest critics? Did you have to have somebody come in from an outside ear and be like, guys, this is good. Stop it. You're being too hard on yourself. <laughs> you know, you know, we probably should have, but uh, we're just so hands-on, man. We love it. And, uh, so, yeah, we didn't actually. We just we just dove in ourselves. But, um, yeah, that's probably would have been smart. <laughs> Maybe I'll call you next time. <laughs> oh, oh man god yeah i don't know that's scary <laughs> no no when you guys did the uh, video as well so not only did you have to listen did you had listened to it you also got to watch yourselves on stage was there any times where you guys were you one of you you just sat back and went holy shit i can't believe i did that <laughs> yeah there's always those moments for sure either for better or for worse <laughs> is there one that sticks is there one that sticks out for you or any of the guys that is probably the one that you guys are ribbing each other the most about. Is there one moment that you guys saw rewatching all that? And it's just that's the one. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny on this particular tour. There actually there wasn't any like notable hilarious ones. You know, uh, right. yeah, it, there was. There in the past there has definitely been man. There's there's been some beauties, but um, yeah, there's always little things. You know where you where. <laughs> You know, probably the closest thing to something like that on, on this particular tour was just like, you know, standing, hopping up on a riser at, a, at the wrong time and just getting shot in the face with cryo or something like that, you know, but <laughs> nothing too, uh, too insane. Right. Do you think you reeled it in because you knew you were being videoed on all these nights? Do you think that had an effect on you or no? Well, you know, yeah, sometimes I would say that, and that was part of the, you know, picking the right performance stuff too, is that, you know, the first couple times trying certain things when you're shooting a DVD, it's almost like the first couple times you start recording in the studio where you, it just, it doesn't feel natural. So it takes a minute to kind of be like, okay, but you know what, to just shake that and try to forget that it's happening and just do what you do naturally, you know? And uh, so, yeah, there were, there were moments of that where you needed to, you know, it took us a little time to just shake that, forget that it was there, you know? Yeah, it kind of weirded out by it. Like, you know, every, uh, I mean, you already have the fans watching every move you make. Now it's being... And, you know, they are recording it with their cell phones and everything like that. But now it's being professionally recorded in, you know, HD, crystal clear imaging. So, yeah, that could totally freak you out for a while. Oh, yeah. No, it's so true, man. It's, uh, you can't, uh, you can't hide anything. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no kidding, man. That ain't no kidding. Now, you said, you know, that, uh, you guys are really, you know, you were back on a label back in the day and you've been doing everything independent now. Do you feel like that as being an independent artist that you have actually gained more, you know, with your fans and more success being independent than you were when you're on the label? You know, I, I can honestly say that, that yes, it, it has been, uh, you know, we love, we love, uh, that label, Tooth and Nail and Emi, we love those guys and no, uh, no harm, no, no foul there. It's just, uh, you know, for, we really felt like this was the right thing for this particular band. And, uh, we've always been very hands on and, and it, it meant a lot to us to be able to kind of just increase the connectivity with our audience, you know, just to kind of remove a layer of that and just walk this journey together like a hundred percent. And, um, and that's really what it's been, man. So it, it's been a very kind of organic process and it's, it's very grassroots. And, you know, we, we want their feedback and we listen to them and we, you know, we interchange things, and when we when we can get creative and inspired and give away free music or release things differently, excuse me, than we used to, and all of that stuff, you know, just kind of keeps it fun and, and challenging all at the same time. You know, it, it's certainly more of a risk uh, and a lot more work uh, to do it independently, but we have a, you know, a small team of people that are very passionate about the same vision, and it's been great, man. Oh, well, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, that's awesome, man. Um what's next man what, what what's next 
<laughs> I'm actually currently uh, finishing a, a new hip hop project that I've been working on. I just felt super inspired to do this year, man. I hip hop's always been something. It's been in my DNA from when you know when I was just a kid, man. I, I released a few hip hop records before I started Thousand Foot Crutch. So, um, yeah, it's called As Thick as Thieves, like A T A T. And uh, so, yeah, I'm finishing that at the moment while we're on this break and kind of enjoying some fam time. And right now, we're just trying to. Everybody's kind of spread out, just enjoying the families, you know. And we got this coming out, and uh, lo- lots in store for the new year, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, what well, what came first for you? Was it a, was was it the hip hop or was it the rock? I mean, as as a youngster coming up, what came first to you? What what, what was your first love? It actually was hip hop, man. We uh, it's funny how how things work out. We it was just you know that old classic stuff, you know, and um, that was the stuff that really grabbed me, man. When I was younger, and I you know I still love it to this day, and started writing rhymes and uh, messing around with turntables and samplers and old vinyl and jazz records and stuff like that. And um, yeah, really just was consumed by that for quite a while, man. And uh, then we had one classic rock station was our, our only radio station in town too. So those have always been my kind of uh, musical influences, I guess, growing up and, uh, you know, have certainly found their way into TFK authentically for sure. Yeah. No, I feel you, man. My, uh, I was actually, a hip hop guy first too before I got into rock myself. I was started getting into it in that early nineties when the whole gangster rap started coming up. That was really Yeah. That was my thing before I ever got into rock. So yeah, I'm with you right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Right on, brother. Oh yeah. Well that's gonna be great, man. I mean what is are you uh, independently doing the uh hip hop thing yourself? Yeah. Same, okay. same uh same sort of process and yeah, having a lot of fun with it, man. I'm actually just finishing it up this week uh, the first ep and kind of figuring out how i want to release it but right it's on. been a ton of fun man and uh very inspired for sure oh yeah well then after that you guys are going to get back on the uh, tfk gig and start uh writing some more getting ready for the new year what, what's the plans there yeah absolutely man oh, and with tfk too we're kind of always writing man i, I kind of always uh working on ideas for that throughout the year and even on breaks and stuff so we'll uh yeah man we'll be back at it Oh yeah, well man, you got two days before Untraveled Roads comes out, which I also want to, how did you come up with the title for Untraveled Roads? Because I'm pretty sure you guys traveled every damn road on this last leg you guys were on. <laughs> so true. But we, uh, on the Inhale record, we had a song, uh, one of the singles was called Untraveled Road, and the, so it was kind of stemmed on a play on that, but it was more so, it just kind of tied in well because of what you said, because, you know, looking back on the last 20 years, you know, I, I do feel like we've like, we could have been that Google maps truck, you know, <laughs> I think we've been down every street, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, a, a bit of both, I guess. Oh yeah, man. That's awesome. Well, like I said, man, you're two days away, September 15th, uh, untraveled roads will re- release to the masses, man. Um, Dude, congratulations on all your guys' success. Yes, you guys have been out there killing it. You deserve it. That's what you got to do. And uh, is there anything Thank you just so want to? Yeah, man. Is there anything you just want to say to the fans before we let you get on with your day? Absolutely, man. Just uh, a massive thank you, you know, to everybody out there for walking this journey with us, man, and uh, continuing to. And we we really hope you guys enjoy untraveled roads as much as we did making it. And uh, can't wait to see you guys again face to face. Right on, man. Absolutely. And I, you know, I can't wait to hear this, uh, hip hop EP you got coming out, man. I'm kind of excited for that. So. <laughs> right on, brother. Hell yeah. I hope you dig. Right on, man. Well, Trevor, you have a good rest of the evening, man. And, uh, like you said, we'll see you soon. All right, buddy. You too. Thanks a lot. All right, sir. Bye bye.